Hello, parents of the class of 2022. Thank you for taking uh, the time to watch this uh, video presentation regarding uh, the next year and a half uh, for your students. Uh, the first thing, I have several things we need to cover here. Uh, the first thing is to uh, uh, let you know that ISTEP uh, will be taking place in February. Uh, this is a graduation qualifying exam. Um, the class of 2022 is the last class that has to uh, endure uh, the ISTEP. Um, again, it is a graduation qualifying exam, so if a student doesn't pass that, then we need to look at other ways um, for them to make, meet the uh, graduation requirements. Uh, scheduling uh, will be started here in the next uh, week or so. I'll be coming into the class, into the English classrooms and presenting uh, the how-tos of uh, scheduling and uh, the things that you have to have um, as a senior, English 12, government econ, uh, making up any of the uh, core classes that you might have missed along the way in math science, social studies, and those kinds of things. Um, there will be on the counselor uh, counseling webpage um, uh, a tutorial on how to uh, do your scheduling. Uh, parents are welcome to, to, to view that. Uh, Mrs. Um, Davis and Mrs. Graham uh, have put that together. Uh, just kind of walk you through the steps of how to go on to the scheduling portal and make sure you've uh, picked the classes that you want to have uh, for your uh, senior year. And I would encourage you, even if you're thinking of doing uh, or wanting to do a early grad um, or um, a partial day or internship or anything like that, fill your schedule uh, with 14 credits. Um, and then as we meet and you get accepted into different programs, um, then we can drop uh, some of those things. Um, but you need to make sure that you've got a full schedule uh, when you're done with that, that scheduling. Mrs. Graham and I will be the one who uh, sends passes out uh, for you guys uh, for your senior year. Uh, and again, that'll be happening in the next week or so. And we'll start that process in the next week or so. Um, uh, so be ready for that. Um, let's see here. One of the things I wanted to, to show you guys was um, what happens if for students that don't pass the I-STEP, um, we have the Indiana Graduation Pathways, and you'll notice here it says students starting with the class of 2023 must meet these things here. Um, the nice thing about uh, this the Indiana, Indiana Graduation Pathways is we, as your, your juniors, have the opportunity for the class of 22, 2022 to opt into this if they don't pass the I-STEP. Um, and there's three boxes that they have to go through. One is the credits. Uh, you have to have 40 credits as a minimum uh, to graduate uh, for Core 40 and also for the general diploma. The academic honors and technical honors diploma, you have to have 47 credits, and each of those 47 credits have to be at a C minus or above. Um, then there's uh, box two is the uh, learn and demonstrate uh, employability skills. And there's lots of different things on here. I'm gonna pull up another slide in a minute here and uh, show you that, um, some of the different ways that you can um, fill box two. Box three is uh, post-secondary ready competencies, and that's, you can see them listed there. Uh, those who are working on an honors diploma, that would cover that. If you score high enough on the SAT or the ACT, uh, that will take care of uh, box three. Uh, ASVAB, which is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, which is an excellent uh, career tool, uh, matches your aptitudes. Uh, things that you're good at, uh, along with your interest to, to kind of point you in a direction, in a career path direction. Um, the minimum, if you score a 31 or above on the ASVAB, uh, then that would that would qualify. Uh, most of our students who take the ASVAB are not going into the military. Uh, we have some that are, uh, but you don't have to be going into the military to take the ASVAB test and to use that as uh, something for box um, Box three, uh, industry certification, apprenticeship, we don't really have. 
Um, that CTE concentrator that's down there um, is more like a pathway. Uh, getting six credits in a pathway um, will help qualify uh, for that for that box three. Also, if you take three AP um, or dual credit uh, courses, um, that's another way that you might be able to qualify uh, or fill box three. Um, let me take you to box two here. And oh, that is not box two. That is uh, the graduation qualifying or gradu uh, graduation pathways in Spanish. Um, I'll leave that there for a minute or so if you want to take a picture of that. Um, unfortunately, I don't speak Spanish, uh, but this was on there. So All right, box two, where did you go? There you are, box two. Here's the box two. All the different things that uh, we have here at Warsaw that can help uh, meet box two. You can see over here, project-based learning experience. There's several different um, classes where you would uh, meet the requirement for that. Uh, Work-based learning over here on the right, you'll notice that employment is one of them. Uh, if you're employed somewhere, uh, you have to have at least 75 hours. Um, and with each of these, uh, either project-based, work-based, or service-based learning, there's going to be some writing uh, that you're going to have to do um, to get that. Uh, you'll see there's JROTC, Jobs for America's Grads, that are, are on that as well. And in the middle box here, the service-based learning, uh, band, choir, dance, uh, key club, sources of strength, peer tutoring, student council. There's lots of different ways uh, to fill or to, yeah, to check off uh, that box two um, for the uh, graduation pathways. So let's get back here. There we are. Um, the other things I wanted to talk to you about uh, for your for your juniors um, is uh, college visits. Uh, a lot of colleges, uh, you can do a virtual visit, um, and that, that might be the way that you want to do it. Um, but there are some schools that are doing the traditional college visits. Uh, and the way, what you would do is just contact the college and ask about uh, visiting. Um, it's always good if you can do that um, in person uh to walk around the campus uh, to see where the what the dorms are like uh, to see how far it is between uh, the dorm and, and where you're going to be uh, in class at um, i always encourage uh, young people to test the food uh, eat if you if you're able to go to the campus uh, go ahead and eat in one of the cafeterias or whatever to see if it's if it's good um, that's important to me i wouldn't want to be there for four years and not uh, know that I can get a good meal. Um, uh, typically, uh, juniors are allowed two uh, visits uh, that will be excused. Um, and what, what you would do is uh, contact the college, set up the appointment, go see them, and then uh, get a, just a note or a letter from them saying that they appreciated that you were there. You bring that to the attendance office so that you can get that excused. Um, and again, that's two college visits uh, for juniors. Seniors, we have more opportunities for that uh, as well when you become a senior. Uh, the SAT and ACT are college entrance exams. There are a lot of colleges right now that are opting out of uh, students having or using that as a requirement for students to be enrolled in their college. Um, uh, I would encourage you to take one or both uh, of the tests uh, just so that you're aware you're well you're aware of it and uh, you know how you did on it. Some college scholarships may depend on a certain score for you. Um, 
So if you're uh, if you're interested in going to certain colleges, I would encourage you to check on the school website to see whether or not they require the ACT or the SAT. Uh, if they don't, again, you might want to still take it just for uh, your own purposes. Don't send it anywhere um, until you need it. Um, you know, there's three uh, SAT. The SAT is offered here at the high school, and there's three more opportunities for that between now and the end of the school uh, this year, this school year. ACT used to be given at Grace. It's not anymore. Uh, you'd have to go to the ACT website uh, to see where the ACT is given at. Um, 21st century scholars, I would encourage you to make sure that you are completing your, um, your tasks. If you didn't get everything done for your freshman and your sophomore year, uh, make sure that you get those things taken care of, get, get this year, this junior year taken care of, and then make sure you're, you're taking care of what you need to do for uh, your senior year as well as we're getting to that. One of the things on those, one of those activities is either taking the ACT or the SAT. Uh, so if you have questions about that, um, feel free to email me, come down and talk to me, or either any of the late, either of the ladies, Mrs. DeBald or Mrs. Barnes, and we can give you that information on how to get signed up for the ACT or the SAT. Uh, the last thing uh, I will say is uh, uh, the academic showcase is coming up on the 28th, which is what's today? The day's the 20th, uh, so uh, next Thursday. Um, and there will be a lot of videos. Uh, you'll be able to view this video, uh, but there are all kinds, of, all kinds of other videos on, on the different classes that are uh, available to you. I encourage you to just watch as many as you can. Uh, and when you're making your selections for scheduling, that you do so um, with some information behind that. Um, I think that's all I have. Thanks uh, again for. Um, listening to this video and uh, I hope to see some of you in here scheduling soon.